after today's testimony, for you, is there any more clear explanation as to why these tech prices are more expensive in Australia? Uh, look, I think we had a suspicion before today. We've done quite a bit of research at Choice Australia uh, into some of the reasons for these quite significant price disparities, as you've identified. Uh, look, in some cases, they're well beyond 50% as well. Uh, and, and I think what it comes down to is something called international price discrimination. So we think these are decisions on behalf of manufacturers, on behalf of the owners of content, to charge a higher price to Australian consumers simply because they can, because they think the market will bear it uh, and they will make more money from doing so. Okay, so you think it's price discrimination. And as I mentioned, we tried to get comments from all three companies, uh, but we only heard back uh, no comment from Microsoft Australia. Uh, so we can refer to what they said in testimony today instead. Now, Microsoft said there's no standard global price for its products. So in essence, prices are set by each market. So this is really an example of free market competition. Is there anything wrong with that? Oh, look, certainly we, we don't begrudge any business doing what they're set up to do, which is to, to compete. But I think that there's, there's two issues that we have. One is that they use measures which we would deem anti-competitive to actually sustain these higher prices. So essentially things called geo-blocking, which is where you use technological measures to segment your market geographically. Uh, it, it's essentially the, the, what happens if you log on to the iTunes store from Australia and it sends you automatically to the Australian store. It won't let you buy products from the US store at 50% or 70% less of the cost. And the same happens with Adobe and Microsoft. So certainly we think the fact that they use those measures to sustain the price differences uh, is anti-competitive. And beyond that, we think some of these businesses, uh, I guess, have a dominant position in the market. So certainly the testimony given by Microsoft, they were asked several times about the fact that uh, almost every household and small business in Australia would use some sort of Microsoft product, whether that was Windows, Word, Excel. Uh, and really, when you have a position like that in the market, uh, whether it's dealing with consumers or small business, it means that your ability to, if you like, uh, price uh, is much stronger than if you're in a more competitive market where you essentially have some level of competitive tension restraining your pricing. Now, Matt, uh in testimony today, Apple also spoke out and they said that, you know, they would love cheaper prices, but they don't really have an option. That was sort of their platform. They blame the content owners, saying music labels, for example, for iTunes, charge a higher wholesale price for the Australian market. So as a response, they have to charge higher prices on iTunes. Uh, does that ring true to you? Do you buy that argument? Look, it was certainly a fairly forthright argument from Apple, and, and to the extent that they are essentially a, a, a shop front for uh, songs, for movies, for television shows, it, it is correct. So the wholesale price, which is set by the, the movie studio, the TV network, the recording company, uh, obviously makes up the bulk of the price that you then see on iTunes. But look, there was some scepticism as well, I think. The fact that Apple is one of the world's largest companies, uh, the idea that they would be solely a price taker, and not have any influence in the, in the negotiations with the content owners uh, did raise a few eyebrows. But look, certainly I think that there is something of a case for saying that this, the prices you see on iTunes are largely influenced by the owners of that content.